Welcome back to Make Something with me, David Petruto, and today I want to show you the reality of what my shop looks like after a project. One of the common comments that I get is, how do you keep your shop so clean? What's going on here? This doesn't seem real. So let's go take a look inside. So I'll show you the last project that we were working on, and that is these plant pots over here. So if you have not seen the video, you should check it out. We made two of them, one with the lathe and one without the lathe. The lathe is a very messy tool. And then we also had to use the table saw to cut these up. And so I'm going to show you that my dust collection is not perfect. There's room for improvement. And uh, I have a carpeted shop and you're going to see how difficult it is for me to clean up all these chips and the dust that's on the carpet and everything. So. We're just gonna go around the perimeter and I'm gonna show you what the mess is, what, uh, why I have things out the way they are, and uh, just give you the reality of what happens here in my shop. So we're gonna back up to the door where we entered and I'm just gonna take you around the perimeter. So this is the CNC bed and I haven't used this in a while, but it's, it's, it, ends up to, it ends up being a place to just put stuff. But this is an art project that I'm working on. I flattened this cookie with the CNC. And uh, this is a frame from a previous project that I took off for some reason. And now it's just sitting there. No idea why. And then we got the Shaper Origin over here, which I've not even plugged in yet. But I'm going to make a video on that real soon. It's the new Glowforge air filter. So you can run the laser without exhausting out a window or out the wall. So which is, I haven't even plugged that in yet, but uh, that's, that's something I got. Oh, let me, uh, I'll give you a little sneak peek. Some fiberglass sheets over here, because we're going to do some fiberglass go-kart bodies real soon. Hold on. So moving along, there is the make block laser. We did a review on that a few weeks ago. That is going to my brother. This is the sanding station up here. And um, yes, the dust collection for this is not perfect. As you can see, there's some dust and it ends up on the laser. And so all of that needs to be vacuumed and brushed off and, and cleaned up there. Not too bad, not too bad, but we did a lot of uh, spindle sanding and uh, that created that mess right there. There's a tool you don't get to see very often, my drum sander. But back here in the corner, I've got this light here and this tripod stuff uh, for when we were shooting the, uh, the glamour shots for the end of the video. I don't know why, but I leave drawers open, even though it's one of my biggest pet peeves in the world. And then the lathe, check this out. This is the messiest part. The lathe is one of the messiest tools in the shop and you can see there are just chips and dust all over the floor that's that's kind of a bummer what i want to do someday is build a little bin along here that's going to collect all those chips i mean you're not gonna it's not gonna be perfect but i want to prevent this a little bit and then you can see i had a fan with a filter on there to get some of the fine dust as i was sanding that project and then to the right of that is the drill press, which I haven't used too much yet, but I did do some metal drilling there. And I just leave the vice grips there, just laying on there. Didn't put them away. Didn't put any of my lathe tools away. They're just laying around all willy nilly because when you're in the moment, you don't put things away. And again, I've got a drawer open. I hate drawers open. I don't know why I do that. It's my biggest pet peeve and I do it myself all the time. A couple of the laser projects that we did a couple weeks ago, they're gonna get hung on the wall, maybe inside. But um, we're working on, like I mentioned, we're gonna work on some fiberglass stuff and that's what a lot of this is and some more fiberglassy stuff and some epoxy that's going to be a future video i had to get this sheet of plywood out of the closet and then it just ended up here at my miter saw completely in the way we look over here on the other side there's the the soil that we use to repot the plants that's just sitting there along with a go-kart steering wheel no reason for any of this to be out i just didn't put it away when you're in the middle of a project, you just throw things wherever so you can move on to the next step. When I'm filming my videos, I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. And so it's just like, get that stuff out of my way. On the floor here is drill and shavings and nuts and bolts. I was working on the go-kart axle on the floor. It's one of the, 
It's one of the reasons I really, really love carpet in the shop is because I like to work on the floor. It's just a thing I've done since I was a kid. I drew on the floor. I would play with Play-Doh on the floor, play with Legos or whatever. I just like being on the floor. So I like having carpet. And uh, yeah, so that's where I was sitting on the floor working on a go-kart axle while watching a movie up on the screen. So over here is my workbench. And then beside my workbench is this little uh, rolling cart station that I store various things in. And uh, this becomes a place to put stuff while I'm working. So handsaw, router, dust mask, which are very valuable at this time. Some Velcro for a project I was working on in the house. A couple of extra rings. I'm probably going to turn that into something. I don't know what yet. Lathe parts and wrenches from go-kart projects. Moving over to the bench. My drawers, they, they pull out so I can carry them and move them wherever. And that also opens from the other side. Sometimes I pull them out and then you just sit there in the way. Pet peeve. Wax from the previous project. Sander, there's the go-kart axle I was working on. We'll talk about go-karts in another video. Um, video light cables. And then I got something in the mail. And so that box just ended up there. There's an empty garbage can because I took out the garbage the other day and then didn't put a bag in it and then left the garbage can in the middle of the floor because apparently that's how I was raised. Over here on the bandsaw are the old plant pots. They're just sitting there. Don't know what to do with them. Dusty, dust, look at it. Ugh. My dust collection is no longer hooked up because we moved some things around. So it's a mess down there. And over here on this table, uh, got some epoxy for the fiberglass stuff that we're working on. Some make it snappy stuff because I'm working on a video with them, good folks. And then over here we have the little bandsaw, which doesn't have dust collection hooked up to it right now because it used to be way over on the other side of the shop. It got moved over here and uh, I just haven't had a chance to work on the dust collection on this side of the shop. So as you can see, check out my fine woodworking magazine full of dust. It's full of dust. It sits hovering over my planer, which I don't use this very much. So this becomes a place to put stuff, charging some batteries on the planer. Although I did use the planer a little bit for the last project, which I don't think I showed it in the video, but uh, yeah, joiner, damn it. See, I don't even know the names of my tools. That's a joiner, not a planer. This is the planer and you can see once again, it is a place to put stuff, a bunch of books, some tripod stuff, remotes for the heater and the TV. <sighs> Any flat surface is a place to put stuff. And then in the middle of the shop is the table saw. And you can see the dust collection on the table saw isn't perfect. It shoots out a lot of dust, which ends up on the carpet. The table saw top is a nice flat surface. So a lot of times I'll take some adhesive back sandpaper, stick it on there and sand pieces nice and flat, which is what I did here. And the problem with this is if you remove this within a couple hours, it comes right off. If you let it sit on there for a week, like I did, it leaves all this freaking residue. So. I'll be cleaning that up later because I'm a moron. And the table saw becomes a place to put stuff. There's some camera and some tripod parts. There's another camera over there on the outfeed table, along with some go-kart nuts and bolts and screwdrivers. So yeah, the table saw when it's not being used is a big flat surface, a place to put stuff. Shops are all about places to put stuff. That's the reality of it. So I want to show you something that, uh, myself and Andrew Klein are, are working on. Check this out. So currently I have this overarm dust collection here and this is from Sawstop, the maker of the table. And it's, it's okay, but it's always in the way. It's either in the way this way or it sticks out beyond the outfeed table and is in the way that way. And I, sometimes I wonder if I don't have the proper dust collection hooked up to it because when I use the overarm dust collection, the under the table dust collection doesn't seem to work as well because I'm splitting it off. 
And so I had this thought of, what if I just had something with magnets on the tabletop that just hovered over the blade and then I could remove that or move it out of the way when I needed to. These are magnets that turn off and on and then just place it there when I need to and lock it down. Um, so I was talking to Andrew Klein and he's working with MagSwitch and I said, would MagSwitch be a good solution for this? And like an hour later, he says, hey, check this out. I drew this up real quick. Uh, would this work? And I was like, yeah, I think so. And he's like, I'll make you one. And he just made me one that day <laughs> and shipped it to me. Um, so the thought is I'm going to use this without dust collection, but he did make it so it has this little magnetic and you could put dust collection on here or shop vac or whatever. But I think I'm going to plug that up and I haven't done any test yet. But the thought is, if this is locked down on the table and I have these little bristles, these little horse bristles on here, that it will keep the dust from getting airborne and then the under the table dust collection will soak, soak, suck up that dust. So I just want to keep it from getting on the carpet over here and getting airborne, just keeping it trapped in there and then the under the table dust coat. I've already said this. I'm gonna I'm gonna run some tests. I haven't done that yet. So look forward to that. You'll know if this is a better solution than this. If in future videos you see me using this and not that. So um yeah this is a it's a really cool quick design that Andrew made and it's got the cool meg switch magnets on there. I really think this is going to work. I just need to keep the dust from getting airborne and shooting back in my face. For whatever reason, this table saw shoots the dust like right at your face. I don't know if all table saws do that, but this one definitely does. So typically I'm just throwing stuff out of the way so I can move on to the next step because I'm trying to make videos and projects as quick as possible because that is my job. If woodworking is not your job, you might wanna take it easy and slow down and, and clean up as, you, as you're working. Whether you wanna work fast or slow, work whatever pace that works for you. Every time I start a new project, I clean up completely and start fresh. I don't like starting a new project when the shop is a mess. And so that is one of the reasons why it always looks so clean in my shop is because I do a hard reset every time I start a new project. I'm not going to cook a meal in a messy kitchen. I gotta clean the kitchen first. You know, so maybe you can maybe you can relate to that. Yes, I have a carpeted shop. Yes, I do have to use a vacuum. Yes, it takes a little bit longer than sweeping, but it is worth it because I get to sit on the floor. Having the carpet in here is just easier on my feet and on my back, and it reduces all the reverberation, so it's nice and quiet in here. It is my shop, I get to do whatever I want. In your shop, you get to do whatever you want. Not everything you see on YouTube and on TV is the reality. Every single photo in every single newspaper ever printed is not the full story. The photographer gets to crop in and show you what the photographer wants to show you. Post that photo, they can crop in even more. They can write headlines and cut lines that, that, that serve their narrative. All YouTube videos, all YouTubers, all TV shows, all TV producers, they're showing you an edited version. You are seeing what they want you to see. You are seeing what I want you to see. I want you to focus on the projects and the creativity and being inspired. I don't want, that's why I don't have tools on the wall. I don't want tools to be the focus of my videos. I don't want a mess. I like a nice clean shop. I am showing you what I want you to see and that goes for everybody else. It doesn't mean it's dishonest. It's just, you're always going to see an edited version. You don't know the full story. Yes, my shop always looks super clean. It is not. This is the reality. <laughs>